So in my book, I talk about this magical money dashboard thing, right? And I've always intended to make a quick little video of how exactly one is supposed to go about setting this thing up and how you're supposed to use it. And I just never got around to doing it because I'm a fundamentally very lazy person and things got busy. Um, but you know what? I'm sitting at home all day like all of us. So I figured now is finally the time. So if you've ever, if you've ever wondered what exactly one is supposed to do with this money dashboard thing, I got you boo. Um, this is going to be, I'm just going to, you know, I haven't scripted this or anything. I'm literally just going to go about setting up a new version of the worksheet. Um, so you can follow along at home if you like. Uh, this might be kind of a long rambly video. It'll be kind of like a ramble call podcast. So <laughs> apologize in advance if it's pretty boring. Um, but yeah, I just want to talk you through what you're actually supposed to do with the money dashboard because, hey, I know spreadsheets are not actually everyone's favorite cup of tea. Okay, so the first thing to do is to find the dashboard, which you can find on my website. Uh, it's there. Um, you can also search for it if you just tap the little search button on the top right. And there's also a quick link in the footer. Burr, burr, burr. So that's the first, the first trick. And then the first thing you have to do, so you can open it there. There is very recently a German version as well. Thank you, Google Translate. <laughs> um, I can't speak to how good a translation it will be. Um, and that will take you to the money dashboard, which looks like this right now. Uh, it might look a little bit overwhelming, um, but my piece of advice to you is that if it is feeling too cluttered or not great, um, or it's making you feel a bit overwhelmed, just go and delete anything that isn't useful to you. Um, this is this is your thing, uh, and it should you should make it feel like it's yours. And yeah, I mean, use it as much as it's useful, and don't feel like you have to use it more than that. So the first thing you have to do is you have to follow this magical arrow and go File, Make a Copy. You have to make uh, your own copy of this, otherwise you won't be able to do anything with it. So let's call this Sam's Dashboard of Doom. Cool. And now you will be able to edit it. How exciting, thrilling. Um, oof, my internet is really slow today, guys. So this video might be a lot of us waiting for web pages to load together. Ugh, move to, move to the UK, they said. The internet will be great there, they said. They lied. Anyway, um, so this will open eventually. And you'll see that there are a bunch of different sheets um, and you can swap between them at the bottom here, right? Um, the first sheet is the instruction sheet and basically everything that I'm going to tell you will be reiterated in here, so you don't have to worry. Uh, but you know what? Let's, let's live wild. Let's live on the edge. Let's just delete this because <laughs> you don't need this. You got me. Oh man, are you seriously still loading? This is, man, this is really slow. Oh, there we go. Pictures, that's a good sign. Aha, okay, so we can delete this. Boop. We don't need instructions, yes. You can do this too, obviously, you can delete anything. So generally anything that's yellow is stuff that you need to fill out um, and don't edit anything that is not yellow, okay. So the first sheet asks you to list all of the stuff that you have, right? So all your pockets of money. Um, and what I suggest you do is while you are doing all of this, the spreadsheet will help you kind of track the stuff that matters to you, but you still are need, gonna need to get the data somewhere from this. So in the book, I talk about how useful I have found it to use these apps that kind of manage your account for you. Um, the one that I like to use if you're in South Africa is something called 227. Um, but you know, there's Kubera is a global one. There's Money Dashboard, which is pretty good if you're in the UK. Um, whatever it is, uh, oh, there's a whole window back here and you can see my Twitters. Nothing very exciting. Uh, sorry, I've just dragged this off the screen so I can type in my password without you seeing all of my secrets. Also, my cat is kind of half, <laughs> half lying on my keyboard. <laughs> so typing is very slow. <laughs> anyway, okay. So I'm gonna show you uh, 22.7 just because 
it's something that I like to use. Um, but there are a lot of different options. And on the website, there's also a page that uh, if you search for great apps and tools to help you manage your money, there's a list of suggestions. But basically you want something that gives you the data, like your input, and then you want to use that to put stuff into the sheet, which is sort of the output. It's like, you know, where you, where you think about stuff. So I've just linked one account, which is this one random credit card that I've had for a hundred years um, after I uh, <laughs> recovered from my debt black hole that many of you have heard about. Um, you know, I have a little credit card. I've kept it open for a very long time, just in case, you know, I ever need a credit card. I don't know. I don't even know why I have it. But basically what you do in 227 is you go and link accounts and you can link pretty much everything here. So you can link your bank accounts. You can also link your investment accounts, whatever. There are a lot of different tools that let you do stuff like this. I'm just going to show you this one just because it's cool. Um, so the first thing you want to do is go and link everything you have, right? I'm just linking this one, but you want to link every single thing that you can link. And then you want to write them down in here. So I want to say this is my credit card from F and B. Um, maybe I also have a, uh, maybe I have a separate fuck around fund, like a capital account. Maybe I have uh, an emergency savings money. Um, and maybe I also have uh, a little bit of investments. Let's say I bought some, I don't know, uh, cat shares, shares and cats. Uh, that, that's if that was a thing, I would be totally into it. And let's say I have a retirement annuity. Okay, cool. So write down whatever you have. Um, you can put that in if you want to. So that's kind of a, what is that? Consumer debt. Let's say that's just a bank account. Let's say that's a little savings account. Uh, and what this does is it just pre-populates some stuff. Oh, what's emergency savings? My cat shares are a very excellent investment. Um, oh. Yep, that seems like the right thing. Uh, whew, I set up these categories a very long time ago. <laughs> I'm not sure I would set this up the same way now. Uh, you can write down your institution here as well. So, you know, this is F and B. This is, say, Capitec. This is, say, I don't know, where would I have emergency savings? This would be under my bed, which, by the way, you should not do, obviously. But uh, let's say I have, I own this through, I don't know, Cats R Us. And I have a retirement account with uh, company Y. I don't know, don't want to call out too many names. Okay, now you don't have to worry about this. This will kind of fill itself in later. Uh, if, you, if your account costs you something every month, then write it in. So, you know, say my credit card, I think actually you can see what my credit card costs me every month. It should have, oh no, the fee would come off the other account. I think this cost me like 34 rand or something. Ugh, sorry, cat's on laptop. Um, oh, and I actually can just do that. So I can just override what it's gonna assume and say my Capitec account costs me like five bucks. Um, those accounts won't cost me a monthly fee. They will probably um, cost, they will give me interest, right? So if you know what interest rate you get on these accounts, go and type it in there. And the reason we do this is just so that when in our monthly review, we're thinking about, hey, should I, you know, put some money, move some money from this savings account to another savings account? It just helps you make that decision so that you can remember, well, you know, what interest rate do I get there? Say I get 7% in that savings account, but historically I've gotten, you know, a much better savings rate from the other account. Maybe you want to move it somewhere there. If you don't know what these answers are, just leave the defaults for now. It's really worth going to find out if you have debts, especially what interest rate you're actually paying on them, because that will guide you in your club, your debt plan. Um, you can go and ask your bank. Doing all of this homework is a bitch. I won't lie, but it's totally worth it. Um, if you, while you're doing this research, it's worth plopping the link to, you know, where you end up finding this information. So if you ever want to check it in future, it's there. Um, but we can just also ignore all of that for now. Okay. Oh, why do I not have this full screen? Why am I making you look at this in just a tiny half? It's very rude of me. 
Okay, so once you've listed out all of your accounts and you've at the same time gone and add them to added them to your tracking app, right? So you would go and link all of these different accounts to 27 or money dashboard or whatever you're using. Um, then go and do the same thing for all of the insurances that you have. This is this sheet doesn't actually do anything. It's just a place for you to keep track of this information. Um, so that you're not, you don't have to look for it later. Uh, but yeah, you can kind of ignore the sheet if you want to. I'm just going to hide it for now because I don't feel like finding all of this information. Okay, the next task is to think about how you want to categorize your spending. So here are some options for you. And this is a very personal thing. So, but it's really worthwhile sitting with this for a little while and thinking, like, how do I like to think about my money? How do I like to pocket it up and what are the categories that make sense to me, you know, that will help me make different decisions about my spending. Um, so those are, that categorization sheet is just full of ideas. Um, you can look at it and you can type your own there, or you can also just delete this sheet as well or hide it because it's kind of only useful the first time you set it up. Where you really are going to use that is in this sheet, this monthly spending sheet. So let's rather just talk about it here. So the first time you open the sheet, it's really worthwhile spending some time and go through all of these categories and make sure that they make sense to you. So let's say that um, I have a salary. Um, I sometimes get money, you know, paid back to me from friends or I get random refunds and other, you know, stuff that isn't really income. It's kind of just, you know, money back. And let's say that I have two different side hustles. I have one side hustle selling, I don't know, uh, dildos, um, homemade, obviously very good. And I have another side hustle. Maybe I want to add a special category just for that one. So you can go and actually add that if you want to. And let's say that my other side hustle is much more wholesome. It's live readings of... Uh, roll doll poems I don't know uh to kids that sounds very wholesome um so you can you know split up your different income sources if that's interesting for you the next category is you know what is money that is going towards your freedom so what are sort of your financial goals the money that isn't really being spent so much as it's being put towards your other you know places so Depending on which money game you're playing, you might be focusing on trying to get out of debt, build an oh-shit fund, build a table flip fund. Uh, we're all trying to make sure that we're not poor when we're old. Um, or you might be trying to build a freedom fund. So my suggestion to you is that, like, you know, if you have already gotten out of debt and you don't, you're not really playing this game, just delete the stuff that isn't relevant to you. So let's say I already have an oh-shit fund. Maybe just, I just want to delete that. Maybe right now my focus is this and this. I'm not yet building a freedom fund. I'm still trying to build up my emergency savings into a slightly bigger pot. Um, let's say I still have a little bit of debt. Okay, so maybe this is what makes sense to me. Um, then what are some biggies that you're saving for, right? So let's say I don't celebrate Christmas. I celebrate Hanukkah, but we don't really, it doesn't really cost anything. So I don't know, just delete that. Let's say I'm not saving for a Japan trip, but I don't know, I am saving to go to, I don't know, Nairobi. You can go and change that there. Say you don't have a car, so that's not relevant to you. Maybe just delete that row. Maybe there's other stuff that is relevant to you. You would go and add those down there, right? So I'm not going to keep going through this, but you get the idea. Go and make this sheet yours. If you don't have cats, don't have the cats thing. Maybe you have kids. I believe that is a life choice that some people have rather than cats. Um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, spend some time with this and make it make sense to you. The thing to do is to then go and match this in the app that's tracking your money, right? So in 227, what this means is going through all of the transactions that are automatically synced through from your account, right? So these are actual transactions from my credit card. Um, you know, this was me paying the vet some money. Um, but now on my spending dashboard, I my category isn't 
pets, it's cats. You know, that's, I, I like to be a bit more specific. So you can actually go and change this. So there is no category here called cats. So I can go and make one so that it exactly matches, um, you know, my, my dashboard. And that'll make it easier for me later. Um, and then you can go and just recategorize all of the spending. So I didn't categorize these. This was just 20 to seven, taking some educated guesses. It guessed that this Netflix transaction was, you know, paying a TV type cost, which was true. Uh, this was me paying money to a friend who runs these really cool pub quizzes. That for me is kind of like an entertainment cost. Um, so it doesn't always get it right and you need to do a little bit of categorizing, but it's much easier than trying to go through your transaction history one by one and doing all of this manually. So, you know, you're going to have to spend some time with the tool that you choose and get the categories to match how you want to think about it in your money dashboard. Um, but do that. And then what you'll be able to do is it will make filling this out much easier down the line, right? Because all of your categories will already be summed up for you and you won't need to go and do that math. Okay. So that's the next, that's the step of thinking about your categorization, right? So that's all the setup that should really be required. And I say that's all, I understand that doing this can take several hours and can be boring as heck. Um, but that's done when it's done you, and it's done when all of your pieces of all of your accounts, all the bits of money that you have are being tracked in an app. Um, and your transactions are being categorized in a way that makes sense to you and matches what you've set up in the spreadsheet. Okay. That's, that's the one sort of thing that you only ever do once. Now imagine it's the beginning of at the end of the month, right? So it's the start of your new money month, however you want to think about it. So it's the very first one. So the one thing I am going to do, I'm going to come to this monthly balance sheet. And this is yellow because this is something that you want to update. So right now, it, you know, this says January 2020. Right now it's actually June. So I am starting in June 2020. So I'm going to update that. And then if I just drag that across, that should update those dates as well. Nope, it did not. So that's irritating. I think you have to actually highlight two and then drag. Yeah, irritating. Um, and now some of them are, are yellow, which I don't want. So let's go and make them black again. Cool. And this I'm going to unyellowify because I know that this is where I need to ultimately fill stuff in. Well, actually, I'll leave it for a second. Okay, so it's the beginning of the month. What do I do? The first thing I do is on payday, which is when my money month starts, uh, my, the start of my June month, which might actually be the 25th of May, right? If that's how I think about things. I'm going to come to the monthly balance sheet. So I'm going to come and play with all of these red underlined ones. These are the ones that I, I sort of spend my most time with. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to type in what is my current balance on each of these accounts. So if you have them all connected to an app like this, this is super easy because all of them will be here. So I can literally just type them, type them out, or you can go and, you know, open up those individual apps and, and kind of do that. But okay, so this one, my balance is negative 2104 because that's a debt. Let's pretend I have, I don't know, 500 Rand in my fuck around fund. I have 2000 Rand of emergency savings. Uh, my cat shares are worth 20, 50,000 because cats are so valuable. And I have, I don't know, 6,000 in my retirement savings account. Okay. That's it. That's all you have to do on this sheet. And okay, the one thing I am going to do is I'm just going to make this a little bit neater. So I'm just going to make that a white background so that it's all neat. So what this will do is it will tell me what my current net worth is at this time. And as I fill it in month to month, it'll start to give me a picture of how these balances have changed. And that'll give me a sense of how well I'm doing in the end. So let's say next month when I do this again, this balance has now changed. So let's say I've kind of paid off some of my credit cards. So that's now gone down. I've managed to, I mean, you know, the fuck around fund is the fuck around fund. Let's say I've managed to put away another hundred bucks in my emergency savings. Let's say my cat shares have increased in value. And let's say my retirement savings are still the same. 
you can start to see how much each of these accounts have improved every month, which is really cool. And you can start to see, okay, well, overall, your net value grew 1,700 Rand in that month, which was 3%. Awesome. And inside, that can start to give you a really cool picture of how you're doing. Are you going in the right sort of direction? You know what? And even if that is all you do, I, I think that that's probably useful. Um, if you want to get a little bit deeper and really start to understand why your spending is changing in the way that it's changing, uh, you need to come and spend some time with this monthly spending tracker. So, okay, let's imagine that it is now, it's also again, it's June. So we haven't gone forward in time. Oh my goodness. Why? Oh, that's still February. Why did I, guys, you didn't stop me. So actually, sorry, that needs to be July, 2020. And then, why couldn't you stop me through this one-way stream of the internet, people? Okay, there we go. That now actually makes some sense. <laughs> Soz. Okay, so let's imagine it's the first time still, right? So back, we're June. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this sheet now. This should have automatically updated. Very good, very good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here where this yellow is. I'm not going to worry about up here. That's going to automatically sort itself out, which I know because it's gray. Um, I'm going to go and fill in the details. So at the end of the month, I'm going to say, where did my money actually go? So this again, I'm now going to get from my spending tracker. If yours, depending on which one you're using, might look quite different to this. But however you do it, there should be an easy way for you to get a summary of over this time period, what was your spending on each of these individual categories, right? So what was my spending on cats in that period? In 227, I can see that there, that's 1993. I can change the date period by playing around up there, but you'll have to figure out how to do this with your own tool, right? If you're really a sucker for punishment, you can also just go and work this out manually by going through your bank statements, but you know, who's got time for that? So what I would do here is I would literally just go and fill this in. So this can be a little bit more time consuming, but it really shouldn't be that bad. So, you know, say my salary for this period, I don't know, it was 15,000. Um, let's say I got 200 bucks back from friends paying me back for, I don't know, buying them shit, uh, loading the money. Um, I had a really bad dildo selling month. No one was into dildos, so I made no money there, but you know, I did make some very good money doing live readings. That was cool. Okay, then that's going to tell me that overall I had that amount of money coming in. It's also going to populate up there. Okay, now where did my money out go? So let's say that I put 200 bucks into paying off my debt. I can't remember if I'm supposed to put negatives in front of this. I mean, it's not like I built this thing. <laughs> Let's see. And let's say I put 500 bucks into my emergency fund. So there we go. That would tell me that, all right, and I need to spend some money. So let's say I didn't put anything towards my biggies because I was bad, but I paid my rent. It was 5,000. I spent, I don't know, 2,000 bucks there. And I spent 200 bucks in cash that just vanished. And who even knows what happened to it? uh cool okay yeah that worked no that did not work oh weird there's stuff broken i will fix this in a second actually let's fix it now um so sometimes stuff will break it's excel don't panic basically uh, just follow the formula and see what it's trying to tell you right so money saved what it should be trying to do is just add up all of the money that you saved that wasn't debt ah okay and the reason it broke was because i changed some of these categories Right, so I actually just deleted things. I didn't add anything. So I can just delete those that are now missing. There we go, sorted. I'm just gonna drag that across so that it fixes all of those other guys as well. Okay, there we go. So what is this telling me? It's telling me that in June, um, I had 15,000 come in and I only spent 8,000 of it. So actually there's like a gap of 7,200 which isn't great. That should usually be zero because what I should probably have done is then saved more of that money. But you know, I, you know, I, I'm just not filling stuff in. What you want to make sure is that this is not a negative number, that you're not actually spending more money every month than you have coming into your bank account, because that's how you end up in a debt cycle. Trust me, I know. 
Um, as long as that's negative, I mean, zero or positive, that's fine. Um, what this is saying is that during this month, you had that come in, you had that go out. It went out in the following ways. 7,200 of it was spent, uh, 600 bucks was saved and 200 bucks went back to debt. That's going to say that your spending ratio was 47%, which would be amazing, right? So you only actually spent less than half of the money that you earned in that month. And this is the one that we really care about this number. That's why it's in red and you want to track that over time. And basically friends, that's how you use this month to month. As the more you use this, the better you will start to understand your spending. Um, it shouldn't, once you've set it up properly, it really shouldn't take you that long every month. There are a couple of tiny nuances because it's not a perfect spreadsheet. Um, one of the funny little tweaks is that this gives you a three month average. So let me just kind of imagine three months. So I'm actually just gonna imagine that everything was the same for three months because I'm lazy. Um, cool. You can keep the yellow highlighting if you want to, if it helps you remember what you're supposed to be filling in. You can also just go in and make it white. You can make it pink. I don't know, dude, you live your truth. I, I am not the boss of you. Let's say in this month you, I don't know, also donated some money there. Okay, now what you might just have to check is that this three month average is actually working because I think at the moment it's kind of set up to be, yeah, if you click on it, it'll show you what it's set up to be. It's the average of those three right now, which is all good and well until it's like November. So let's say, again, let's play this forward until like November. Um, it's still giving you the average of June, which <laughs> June to August, which is not what you want. So there, what you're just gonna have to do is just go and change that so that it's the average of those three months, which you can do by, I think you can just go in there, delete this and then just go rip, highlight the ones that you want and then hit enter. And then it will actually give you that average, which you can see if we increase that and we say, uh, your salary, you've got a big increase, suddenly your uh, average will increase as well. Um, and you will need to do that up there as well, which you can also do by, I just copied that, I hit uh, Command C, so you can also just go copy, and you can go paste, and that'll paste the formula, I think. That'll work. Yeah, it did. Woo, amazing. Let me just go and drag that up. There's no average there because there's no spending in that month. Anyway, so you do need to do that kind of manually. Sorry, I just haven't figured out a more elegant way to do it yet. Um, but again, if this is too much hassle for you, don't worry about the averages. You can also just look at this. Um, if this isn't something you're using, just right click on it and go and hide the column. There we go, done, problem solved. <laughs> so yeah, if uh, spreadsheets aren't your jam, don't panic, like just use, use it as much as it is helpful to you. So then if that's all you do, that's rad. Um, over time, you will see that there's this cool chart over here that will start to populate. Um, and it'll just show you your net worth on the left over time. And it will show you your spending ratio over time uh, on this axis, right? So that's your spending ratio, that's your net worth and the lines will fill in. That's a gross graph, but it will look cool in reality. And yeah, if that's all you do, that's rad. I'm just gonna talk you through quickly some of the sort of advanced uses. So once you've mastered that and you're feeling really comfortable with that, that's awesome. Here's some other stuff that this sheet can do. So the one thing it can do is say you start to get really interested in investing because uh, you've realized it's the shizness and you wanna keep an eye on your asset allocation. So there are these three hidden cells in here. So if you just tap that little arrow, you can open them up. Now let's imagine that I've diversified my investments a little bit. So I've got some cat shares. I also have some, I don't know, S&P 500 shares. I also have some, I don't know, uh, bonds. I don't know, you've got a bunch of things. So you'll notice that this balance will automatically populate or it should. Um, so that should be whatever is the latest thing you've entered in there, which should, it's got like a whole thing it does. I don't know. I broke it. 
Um, okay, cool. So that should tell you what is your most recent balance. Um, it's gray, so don't edit it directly. It will pull it from that balance sheet. Uh, okay, and then what you can do is you can come and say, what is the asset allocation of each of these accounts? So if your cat shares, let's say, you might need to just mouse over them to see what this is. Your options that I've put in, but you can obviously change this to whatever you like. I've put in global equities, local equities, cash, bonds, local property, international property, foreign currencies and cryptocurrencies. You know, uh, let's say my cat shares are actually cat coin um, and this is a crypto thing. Um, so that's cat coin. So I'm going to say that's 100% crypto. Let's say that your retirement savings are kind of a blend of things. So maybe it's like 20% cash. It's a little, it's like 80% that thing. So, you know, you can have, that's how you handle funds. You would find that information by checking the fund fact sheet. Um, again, don't worry about this unless you've really mastered everything else. Don't, don't stress if this feels complicated. This is entirely optional. Uh, S&P 500, let's say, are global equities and bonds. Let's say these are local bonds. Yeah, I don't have a local option, so I'm just going to put them there. Cool. So you just go and type in your percentages. And then what you can do over time is you can come down here and you can keep an eye on what percentage of your portfolio is in what. So at the moment, this person's portfolio is like entirely in cryptocurrencies, which is probably not a very smart idea. Um, or, you know, who knows? Yeah, no, it's not. Um, yeah, so you can keep an eye on that, which might be cool if that's a thing you're into. Uh, what else can this thing do? Oh, so it has goals. It has a little goal tracker. Um, this has got some kind of smart suggestions. So based on what kind of account you say that something is on your account list, it'll try to guess um, what your current balance is against these specific goals. But this one really isn't perfect. So you should probably go in and manage this a little bit more carefully. So basically this is just a simple thing to keep you focused on your goal so again sort of ignore anything except the thing that you are currently focusing on so say your focus is to build a table flip fund what i would do is i would say okay so the account that i am putting that in is this emergency savings account right so let's say let's actually just give it a better name let's say like this is my uh cappy tech savings because that's where it is, let's say. Um, what I would do is I would come here and I would say, right, so I'm doing that in my Capitech savings account. Um, oh, right. And then if, if you come back here and you say that is your table flip fund, then it will automatically say, okay, cool. That's what your current balance is of everything that you've said is part of your table flip fund. Um, you can say, what is your target? So again, this will try to guess. And if you follow the logic, it's going D6 by three. So what is that D6 by three? So that is going to monthly spending and is going to your average, uh, your three month average of what you spend. Uh, that's pretty smart. Go past me, past me sometimes those clever things. Um, yeah, so that'll take a guess, but let's say I, I, I think that's wrong. I'm like, actually it should, I'm not comfortable unless I have 50,000 in there. You just go, you do you, you know, and that'll just keep track of how much you have left to go. If you say, you know, what did you, what are you generally putting in? You know, I'm putting in 500 bucks a month. It'll give you an indication of how many months away you are in this case, many months. Uh, yeah, so you can use that if you want. Here's some places where you can go find calculators that might help you figure out what your targets are for these. Again, you probably shouldn't have more than like one max two of these in play at a time and just delete anything that is confusing or overwhelming. You can always go and make a new copy of the spreadsheet from the website and start again if you ever need to. So don't stress. Uh, and the last thing that you'll find in here are these cool nifty little calculators. So, you know, if you ever are asking yourself, uh, you know, if I invest 5,000 Rand at, and get 15% uh, and leave that for 10 years, what is that going to turn into? That will give you a rough indication, you know, and there's, there's a bunch of little calculators in there that might be helpful. But really, that's it. Uh, my, my 
top line uh, message to you is please don't be overwhelmed. I, I really know that spreadsheets are not everyone's thing. Um, but the trick is to just focus on the stuff that is meaningful to you. If all of this is totally overwhelming, it's also fine to just keep track of the same types of things, even just in a notebook, if that's your jam. Um, I think the, 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 the thing that's important is that you are keeping track of where your money is, how hard it is working for you. And most importantly, really, you're keeping track of your spending ratio. You know what your own behavior is like and you can see any potential problems that you might have before they become real problems. Yeah, this is how you do this in the money dashboard. Um, and I hope that it is useful to some of you. Uh, yeah, and let me know if you have any other questions. Okay, I'm gonna try and get my cat off my keyboard now and go on with my day.